Hello students, welcome to the video. In this video, we will be reading Classification of Elements and Periodicity in Properties, Class 11 Chemistry, 3rd Chapter. This video will be an audio book for your revision. Classification of Elements and Periodicity in Properties The periodic table is arguably the most important concept in chemistry, both in principle and in practice. It is the everyday support for students. It suggests new avenues of research to professionals and it provides a succinct organization of the whole of chemistry. It is a remarkable demonstration of the fact that the chemical elements are not a random cluster of entities but instead display trends and lie together in families. An awareness of the periodic table is essential to anyone who wishes to disentangle the world and see how it is built up from the fundamental building blocks of the chemistry, the chemical elements. In this unit, we will study the historical development of the periodic table as it stands today and the modern periodic law. We will also learn how to periodic classification follows as a logical consequence of the electronic configuration of atoms. Finally, we shall examine some of the periodic trends in the physical and chemical properties of the elements. 3.1. Why do we need to classify elements? We know by now that the elements are the basic units of all types of matter. In 1800, only 31 elements were known. By 1865, the number of identified elements had more than doubled, 263. At present, 114 elements are known. Of them, the recently discovered elements are man-made. Efforts to synthesize new elements are continuing. With such a large number of elements, it is very difficult to study individually the chemistry of all these elements and their innumerable compounds individually. To ease out this problem, scientists searched for a systematic way to organize their knowledge by classifying the elements. Not only that, it would rationalize known chemical facts about elements, but even predict new ones for understanding further study. 3.2 Genesis of Periodic Classification Classification of elements into groups and development of periodic law and periodic table are the consequences of systematizing the knowledge gained by number of scientists through their observations and experiments. The German chemist John Doberinier is early 1800 was the first to consider the idea of trends among properties of elements. By 1829, he noted a similarity among the physical and chemical properties of several groups of three elements known as traits. In each case, he noticed that the middle element of each of the traits has an atomic weight about half the way between the atomic weights of the other two. Also, the properties of the middle element were in between those of the other two members. Since Doberinier's relationship refers to as a law of triads seems to work only for few elements, it was dismissed as coincidence. The next reported attempt to classify elements was made by French geologist A. E. B. D. Chancortes in 1862. He arranged the well-known elements in order of increasing atomic weights and made a cylindrical table of elements to display the periodic recurrence of properties. This also did not attract much attention. The English chemist John Alexander Newlands in 1865 profounded the law of octaves. He arranged the elements in increasing order of their atomic weights and noted that every eighth element had properties similar to that of first element. The relationship was just like a every eighth note that resembles the first in octaves of music. Newland's law of octaves seems to be true only for elements up to calcium. Although his idea was not widely accepted at that time, he for his work was later awarded Davy Medal in 1887 by the Royal Society of London. The periodic law as we know it today 
owes its development to the Russian chemist Dmitry Mendeleev and the German chemist Lothar Mayer working independently both the chemist in 1869 proposed that an arranging elements in the increasing order of their atomic weights similarities appear in physical and chemical properties at regular intervals Lothar Mayer plotted the physical properties such as atomic volume melting point and boiling point against the atomic weight and obtained a periodically repeated pattern unlike new lands Lothar Mayer observed a change in length of that repeating pattern in 1868 Lothar Mayer had developed the table of the elements that closely resembles the modern periodic table however his work was not published until after the work of Dmitry Mendeleev the scientist who is generally credited with the development of the modern periodic table while doberinier initiated the study of periodic relationship it was mendeleev who was responsible for publishing the periodic law for the first time it states as follows the properties of the elements are a periodic function of their atomic weights mendeleev arranged elements in horizontal rows and vertical columns of a table in order of their increasing atomic weights in such a way that the elements with similar properties occupied the same vertical column or group mendeleev's system of classifying elements was more elaborated than that of lothar mayers he fully recognized the significance of a periodicity and used broader range of physical and chemical properties to classify the elements in particular mendeleev relied on the similarities in the empirical formulas and properties of the compounds formed by the elements he, he realized that some of the elements did not fit with his scheme of classification if the order of the atomic weight was strictly followed he ignored the order of atomic weights thinking that the atomic measurements might be incorrect and placed the elements with similar properties together for example iodine with lower atomic weight than that of tellurium was placed in the group 7 along with the fluorine chlorine bromine because of similarities in properties at the same time keeping his primary aim of arranging the elements of similar properties in the same group he proposed that some of the elements were still undiscovered and therefore he left several gaps in the table for example both gallium and germanium were unknown at that time mendeleev published his periodic table he left the gap under aluminium and the gap under silicon and called these elements ica aluminium and ica silicon mendeleev predicted not only the existence of gallium and germanium but also described some of their general physical properties these elements were discovered later some of the properties predicted by the mendeleev for these elements and those found experimentally are listed in table 3.3 the boldness of mendeleev's quantitative predictions and their eventual success made him and his periodic table famous mendeleev's periodic table published in 1905 is shown in figure 3.1 table 3.3 mendeleev's prediction for the elements ica aluminium that is nothing but gallium and ica silicon that is nothing but germanium in this table we can see the properties which are predicted which are very similar to the properties which are found 3.3 modern periodic law and the present form of the periodic table we must bear in mind that when mendeleev developed his periodic table chemist knew nothing about the internal structure of atom however the beginning of the 20th century witnessed profound developments in theories about subatomic particles in 1913 the english physicist henry moseley observed regularities in the characteristic of x-ray spectra of the elements a plot of square root of nu where nu is frequency of x ray emitted against atomic number gave a straight line and not a plot of square root of nu versus atomic mass he thereby showed that 
द अटोमिक नंबर इज मोर फंडामेंटल प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ एन एलिमेंट देन इट्स अटोमिक मास मेंडलिव्स पीरियोडिक लॉ वॉज देअर फॉर अकॉर्डिंगली मॉडिफाइड दिस इज नोन एज द मॉडर्न पीरियोडिक लॉ एंड कैन बी स्टेटेड एज द फिजिकल एंड केमिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द एलिमेंट्स आर पीरियोडिक फंक्शन ऑफ देयर अटोमिक नंबर्स द पीरियोडिक लॉ रिवील्ड इम्पॉर्टेंट अनालॉजीज एमंग द नाइंटी फोर नैचुरली ऑकरिंग एलिमेंट्स इट स्टिम्युलेटेड रिन्यूड इंटरेस्ट इन इनऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री एंड हैज कैरिड इन टू द प्रेजेंट विद द क्रिएशन ऑफ आर्टिफिशियली प्रोड्यूस्ड शॉर्ट लिव्ड एलिमेंट्स यू मे रिकॉल दैट द अटोमिक नंबर इज इक्वल टू द न्यूक्लियर चार्ज दैट इज नंबर ऑफ प्रोटोन्स और नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन न्यूट्रल आइटम it is then easy to visualize the significance of quantum numbers and electronic configuration in periodicity of elements in fact it is now recognized that the periodic law is essentially the consequence of the periodic variation in electronic configurations which indeed determine the physical and chemical properties of elements and their compounds numerous forms of periodic table have been devised from time to time some forms emphasize chemical reactions and valence whereas others stress the electronic configuration of elements a modern version the so called long form of periodic table of the elements is the most convenient and widely used the horizontal rows which mendelius called series are called periods and the vertical columns or groups elements having similar outer electronic configurations in their atoms are arranged in vertical columns referred to as groups or families according to the recommendations of international union of pure and applied chemistry the groups are numbered from 1 to 18 replacing the order of notation of 1a 7a 8 1b 7b and 0 there are altogether seven periods the period number corresponds to the highest principal quantum number of the elements in the period the first period contains two elements the subsequent periods consist of 8 8 18 18 and 32 elements respectively the seventh period is incomplete and like the sixth period would have the theoretical maximum of 32 elements in this form of periodic table 14 elements of both 6th and 7th periods are placed in separate panels at the bottom 3.4 nomenclature of elements with atomic numbers greater than 100 the naming of the new elements had been traditionally the privilege of the discoverer and the suggested name was rectified by iupac in recent years this has led to some controversy the new elements with very high atomic numbers are so unstable that only minute quantities sometimes only a few atoms of them are obtained their synthesis and characterization therefore require high sophisticated costly equipment and laboratory such work is carried out with competitive spirit only in some laboratories in the world scientists before collecting the reliable data on new element at times get tempted to claim for its discovery for example both american and soviet scientists claimed credit for discovering element 104 the americans named it rutherfordium whereas soviet named it kurchatovium to avoid such problems the iupac has made recommendations that until a new element discovery is proved and its name is officially recognized a systematic nomenclature be derived directly from the atomic number of the element using numerical roots for zero and numbers 1 to 9 these are shown in table 3.4 the roots are put together in order of digits which make up atomic number and iuum is added at the end the iupac names for elements with atomic number above 100 are shown in figure 3.5 table 3.4 notation for iupac nomenclature of elements digit 0 name will be nil abbreviation is small letter n digit 1 name will be un digit 2 by 3 tri 4 quad 5 pent 
सिक्स हेक्स सेवन सेप्ट एट आउट नाइन इन दस द न्यू एलिमेंट फर्स्ट गेट्स ए टेम्पररी नेम विद सिंबल कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ थ्री लेटर्स लेटर परमानेंट नेम एंड सिंबल आर गिवन बाय ए वोट ऑफ आई रिप्रेजेंटेटिव फ्रॉम ईच कंट्री The permanent name might reflect the country in which the element was discovered, or pay tribute to a notable scientist. As of now, elements with atomic numbers up to 118 have been discovered. Official names of all elements have been announced by IUPAC. 3.5 Electronic configurations of elements and their periodic table. In the preceding unit we have learned that an electron in an atom is characterized by a set of four quantum numbers and the principal quantum number that is n defines the main energy level known as shell we have also studied about the filling of electrons into different subshells also referred to as orbitals that is spdf in an atom the distribution of electrons into orbitals of an atom is called its electronic configuration an element's location in the periodic table reflects the quantum numbers of the last orbital filled in this section we will observe a direct connection between the electronic configuration of elements and the long form of periodic table a electronic configuration in periods The period indicates the value of n for the outermost or valence shell. In other words, successive period in the periodic table is associated with the filling of the next higher principal energy level. It can be readily seen that the number of elements in each period is twice the number of atomic orbitals available in the energy level that is being filled. the first period that is n equal to 1 starts with the filling of lowest level that is 1s and therefore has two elements hydrogen that is 1s1 and helium that is 1s2 when the first shell k is completed the second period that is n equal to 2 starts with lithium and the third electron enters 2s orbital the next element beryllium has four electrons and has the electronic configuration 1s2 2s2 starting from the next element boron the 2p orbitals are filled with electrons when the l shell is completed at neon thus there are eight elements in the second period the third period that is n equal to 3 begins at sodium and the added electron enters a 3s orbital successive filling of 3s and 3p orbitals gives rise to the third period of eight elements of sodium to argon the fourth period n equal to 4 starts at potassium and the added electrons fill up the 4s orbital now you may note that before the 4p orbital is filled filling up of 3d orbitals becomes energetically favorable and we come across the so called 3d transition series of elements this starts from scandium that is atomic number 21 which has the electronic configuration 3d1 4s2 the 3d orbitals are filled at zinc that is atomic number will be equal to 30 with electronic configuration 3d10 4s2 the fourth period ends at krypton with the filling up of 4p orbitals altogether we have 18 elements in this fourth period the fifth period is n equal to 5 beginning with rubidium is similar to the fourth period and contains the 4d transition series starting at yttrium that is atomic number will be equal to 39 this period ends at xenon with the filling up of 5p orbitals the sixth period that is n equal to 6 contains 32 elements and successive electrons enter 6s 4f 5d and 6p orbitals in order to filling up of 4f orbitals begins with cerium that is atomic number 58 and ends at lutetium to give the 4f inner transition series which is called lanthanoid series the seventh period that is n equal to 7 
is similar to the sixth period with successive filling up of 7s, 5f, 6t, 7p orbitals and includes most of the man-made radioactive elements. This period will end up at element with atomic number 118 which would belong to the noble gas family. Filling up of 5f orbitals after actinium that is atomic number 89 gives the 5f inner transition series known as the actinoid series. The 4f and 5f inner transition series of elements are placed separately in the periodic table to maintain its structure and to preserve the principle of classification by keeping the elements with similar properties in a single column. B. Groupwise electronic configurations Elements in the same vertical column or group have similar valence shell electronic configurations. The same number of electrons in the outer orbitals and similar properties. For example, the group 1 elements all have NS1 valence shell electronic configuration as shown below. Thus, it can be seen that the properties of an element have periodic dependence upon its atomic number, not on relative atomic mass. 3.6 Electronic configurations and types of elements, that is SPDF blobs. The upper principle and the electronic configuration of atoms provide a theoretical foundation for the periodic classification. The elements in a vertical column of the periodic table constitute a group or family and exhibit similar chemical behavior. This similarity arises because these elements have the same number and same distribution of electrons in their outermost orbitals. We can classify the elements into four blocks that is S block, P block, D block and F block depending on the type of atomic orbitals that are being filled with electrons. This is illustrated in figure 3.3. We notice two exceptions to this categorization. Strictly, helium belongs to the S block, but its positioning in the P block along with other group 18 elements is justified because it has a complete filled valence shell and has a result exhibits properties characteristic of other noble gases. The other exception is hydrogen. It has only one S electron and hence it can be placed in group 1. It can also gain an electron to achieve a noble gas arrangement and hence it can behave similar to group 17 that is halogen family elements. Because it has a special case, we shall place hydrogen separately at the top of the periodic table as shown in figure 3.2 and figure 3.3. We will briefly discuss the silent features of four types of elements marked in the periodic table. More about these elements we will be discussed later. During the description of their features, certain terminology has been used which has been classified in section 3.7. 3.6.1 The S-Block Elements the elements of group 1 that is alkali metals and group 2 alkaline earth metals which have NS1 and NS2 outermost electronic configuration belong to the S block elements. They are all reactive metals with low ionization enthalpies. They lose the outermost electrons readily to form 1 plus ion in the case of alkali metals or 2 plus ion in the case of alkaline earth metals. The metallic character and the reactivity increases as we go down the group. Because of high reactivity, they are never found pure in nature. The compounds of S-block elements with the exception of those of lithium and beryllium are predominantly ionic. 3.6.2 The P-block elements The P-block elements comprise those belongs to the group 13 to 18. And these together with the S block elements are called the representative elements or main group elements. 
the outermost electronic configuration varies from NS2 NP12 NS2 NP6 in each period. At the end of each period is a noble gas element with a closed valence shell NS2 NP6 configuration. All the orbitals in the valence shell of the noble gases are completely filled by electrons and it is difficult to alter this stable arrangement by the addition or removal of electrons. The noble gases thus exhibit very low chemical reactivity. Preceding the noble gas family are two chemically important groups of nonmetals. They are halogens, that is group 17 elements, and the chalcogens, that is group 16 elements. These two groups of elements have highly negative electron gain enthalpies and readily add one or two electrons respectively to attain the stable noble gas configuration. The non-metallic character increases as we move from left to right across a period and metallic character increases as we go down the group. 3.6.3 The D-block elements that is transition elements. These are the elements of group 3 to 12 in the center of the periodic table. These are the characterized by the filling of inner D orbitals by electrons and are therefore referred to as D block elements. These elements have the general outer electronic configuration N-1D1 to 10, Ns1 to 2 except for palladium where its electronic configuration is 4D10, 5S0. They are all metals, they mostly form colored ions, exhibit variable valence that is oxidation states, paramagnetism and often used as catalyst. However, zinc, cadmium and mercury which have the electronic configuration N-1D10, NS2 do not show most of the properties of transition elements. In a way, transition metals form a bridge between chemically active metals of S-block elements and the less active elements of the group 13 to 14 and thus it takes the familiar name transition elements. 3.6.4 The F-block elements that is also known as inner transition elements. The two rows of elements at the bottom of the periodic table called the lanthanoids that is starts from cerium that is atomic number 58 to lutetium atomic number 71 and actinoids from thorium atomic number 92 lawrencium atomic number 103 are characterized by under the electronic configuration n minus 2 f 1 to 14 n minus 1 d 0 to 1 n s 2 the last electron added to each element is filled in f orbital these two series of elements are hence called the inner transition elements or F-block elements. They are all metals. Within each series, the properties of the elements are quite similar. The chemistry of early actinoids is more complicated than the corresponding lanthanoids. Due to the large number of oxidation states possible for these actinoid elements. Actinoid elements are radioactive. Many of actinoid elements have been made only in nanogram quantities or even less by nuclear reactions and their chemistry is not fully studied. The elements after uranium are called transuranium elements. 3.6.5 Metals, Nonmetals and Metalloids In addition to displaying the classification of elements into SPD and F blocks, figure 3.3 shows Another broad classification of elements based on their properties. The elements can be divided into metals and non-metals. Metal comprise more than 78% of all known elements and appear on the left side of the periodic table. Metals are usually solids at room temperature. Please note mercury is an exception. Metals usually have high melting and boiling points. They are good conductors of heat and electricity. They are malleable, that is, they can be flattened into thin sheets by hammering and ductile, that is, they can be drawn into wires. In contrast, 
non metals are located at the top right hand side of the periodic table in fact in a horizontal row the properties of elements change from metallic on the left to non metallic on the right non metals are usually solids or gases at room temperature with low melting and boiling points they are poor conductors of heat and electricity most non metallic solids are brittle and are neither malleable nor ductile the elements become more metallic as we go down the group the non metallic character increases as one goes from left to right across the periodic table the change of metallic to non metallic character is not abrupt as shown by the thick zigzag line in figure 3.3 the elements like silicon germanium arsenic antimony and tellurium bordering this line and running diagonally across the periodic table show properties that are characteristic of both metals and non metals these elements are called semi metals or metalloids 3.7 periodic trends in properties of elements there are many observable patterns in the physical and chemical properties of elements as we descend in a group or move across a period in the periodic table for example within a period chemical reactivity tends to be high in group 1 metals lower in elements towards the middle of the table and increases to maximum in the group 17 non metals likewise within a group of representative metals say alkali metals reactivity increases on moving down the group whereas with a group of non metals say halogens reactivity decreases down the group but why do we properties of elements follow these trends and how can we explain periodicity to answer these questions we must look into theories of atomic structure and properties of the atom in this section we shall discuss the periodic trends in certain physical and chemical properties and try to explain them in terms of number of electrons and energy levels 3.7.1 trends in physical properties there are numerous physical properties of elements such as melting and boiling points heats of fusion vaporization energy of atomization etc which show periodic variations however we shall discuss the periodic trends with respect to atomic and ionic radii ionization enthalpy electron gain enthalpy and electronegativity first one atomic radius you can very well imagine that finding the size of an atom is a lot more complicated than the measuring the radius of the ball do you know why firstly because the size of an atom that will be nearly equal to 1.2 amstrom that is 1.2 into 10 to the power minus 10 meter in radius is very small secondly since the electron cloud surrounding the atom does not have a sharp boundary the determination of the atomic size cannot be precise in other words there is no practical way by which the size of an individual atom can be measured however an estimate of the atomic size can be made by knowing the distance between the atoms in the combined state one practical approach to estimate the size of an atom of non metallic element is to measure the distance between two atoms when they are bound together by a single bond in a covalent molecule and from this value the covalent radius of the element can be calculated for example the bond distance in the chloride molecule that is cl2 is 198 picometer and half of this distance that is 99 picometer is taken as the atomic radius of the chlorine for metals we, we define the term metallic radius which is taken as half the internuclear distance separating the metal cores in the metallic crystal for example the distance between two adjacent copper atoms in solid copper is 256 picometer hence the metallic radius of copper is assigned a value of 128 picometer for simplicity in this book we use the term atomic radius 
to refer to both covalent or metallic radius depending on whether the element is non-metal or metal. Atomic radii can be measured by X-ray or other spectroscopic methods. The atomic radii of a few elements are listed in table 3.6. Two trends are obvious. We can explain these trends in terms of nuclear charge and energy level. The atomic size generally decreases across a period as illustrated in figure 3.4 for a elements of the second period. It is because within the period the outer electrons are in the same valence shell and the effective nuclear charge increases as the atomic number increases resulting in the increased attraction of electrons to the nucleus. Within a family or vertical column of the periodic table, the atomic radius increases regularly with atomic number as illustrated in figure 3.4. For alkali metals and halogens, as we descend the groups, the principal quantum number increases, the valence electrons are further from the nucleus. This happens because the inner energy levels are filled with electrons which serve to shield the outer electrons from the pull of nucleus. Consequently, the size of the atom increases as reflected in the atomic radii. Note that the atomic radii of noble gases are not considered here. Being monoatomic, their values are very large. In fact, radii of noble gases should be compared not with the covalent radii but with the Wanderbilt's radii of other elements. Second one, ionic radius. The removal of an electron from an atom results in the formation of cation, whereas gain of electron leads to an anion. The ionic radii can be estimated by measuring the distance between cation and anion in ionic crystals. In general, the ionic radii of elements exhibit the same trend as the atomic radii. A cation is smaller than its parent atom because it has fewer electrons while its nuclear charge remains the same. The size of an anion will be larger than that of parent atom because the addition of one or more electrons would result in increased repulsion among the electrons and a decrease in effective nuclear charge. For example, the ionic radius of fluoride ion that is F- is 136 picometer whereas atomic radius of fluorine is only about 64 picometer. On the other hand, the atomic radius of sodium is 186 picometer compared to the ionic radius of 95 picometer for Na+. While we find some atoms and ions which contains the same number of electrons, we call them isoelectronic species. For example, O2- minus, F- minus, Na+, plus, and Mg2+, plus, have the same number of electrons, that is 10. Their radii would be different because of their different nuclear charges. The cation with the greater positive charge will have a smaller radius because of the greater attraction of electrons to the nucleus. Anion with greater negative charge will have the larger radius. In this case, the net repulsion of the electrons will outweigh the nuclear charge and the ion will expand in size. Third one, ionization enthalpy. A quantitative measure of the tendency of an element to lose electron is given by its ionization enthalpy. It represents the energy required to remove an electron from an isolated gaseous atom in its ground state. In other words, the first ionization enthalpy for an element X is the enthalpy change for the reaction depicted in equation 3.1. X in gaseous state will convert it into X plus in gaseous state by losing one electron. The ionization enthalpy is expressed in units of kg per mole. We can define the second ionization enthalpy as the energy required to remove the second most loosely bound electron. It is the energy required to carry out the reaction shown in equation 3.2. X plus in gaseous state 
will be converted into X2 plus in gaseous state by losing one more electron. Energy is always required to remove electrons from an atom and hence ionization enthalpies are always positive. The second ionization enthalpy will be higher than the first ionization enthalpy because it is more difficult to remove an electron from a positive charged ion than the neutral atom. In the same way, the third ionization enthalpy will be higher than the second ionization enthalpy and so on. The term ionization enthalpy, if not qualified, is taken as the first ionization enthalpy. The first ionization enthalpies of elements having atomic numbers up to 60 are plotted in figure 3.5. The periodicity of the graph is quite shrinking. You will find maxima at the noble gases which have closed electronic shells and very stable electronic configurations. On the other hand, minima occurred at the alkali metals and their low ionization enthalpies can be correlated with their high reactivity. In addition, you will notice two trends. The first ionization enthalpy generally increases as we go across a period and decreases as we descend in a group. These trends are illustrated in figure 3.6a and 3.6b respectively for the elements of the second period and the first group of the periodic table. You will appreciate that the ionization enthalpy and atomic radius are closely related properties. To understand these trends, we have to consider two factors. First one, the attraction of electrons towards the nucleus. Second one, the repulsion of electrons from each other. The effective nuclear charge experienced by a valence electron in an atom will be less than the actual charge on the nucleus because of shielding or screening of the valence electrons from the nucleus by the intervening core electrons. For example, the 2s electrons in lithium is shielded from the nucleus by the inner core of 1s electrons. As a result, the valence electrons experiences a net positive charge which is less than the actual charge of plus 3. In general, shielding is effective when the orbitals in the inner shells are completely filled. This situation occurs in the case of alkali metals which have single outermost NS electron precedes by the noble gas electronic configuration. When we move from lithium to fluorine across the second period, successive electrons are added to orbitals in the same principal quantum level and the shielding of the nuclear charge by the inner core of electrons does not increase very much to compensate for the increased attraction of the electrons to the nucleus. Thus, across a period, increasing nuclear charge outweighs the shielding. Consequently, the outermost electrons are held more and more tightly and the ionization enthalpy increases across the period. As we go down the group, the outermost electrons being increasingly further away from the nucleus, there is an increased shielding of nuclear charge by the electrons in the inner level. In this case, increased in shielding outweighs the increasing nuclear charge and the removal of the outermost electrons requires less energy down a group. From figure 3.6a, you will also notice that the first ionization enthalpy of boron atomic number 5 is slightly less than that of beryllium atomic number 4 even though the former has the greater nuclear charge. When we consider the same principal quantum level as S electron is attracted to the nucleus more than the P electron, in beryllium the electron removed during the ionization is an S electron whereas the electron removed during ionization of boron is p electron. The penetration of the 2s electron to the nucleus is more than that of 2p electron. Hence, the 2p electron of boron is more shielded from the nucleus by the inner core of electrons than the 2s electrons of beryllium. Therefore, 
it is easier to remove an 2p electron from the boron compared to the removal of 2s electron from the beryllium. Thus, boron has a smaller first ionization enthalpy than beryllium. Another anomaly is the smaller first ionization enthalpy of oxygen compared to nitrogen. This arises because in nitrogen atom, three 2p electrons reside in different atomic orbitals, that is Hund's rule, whereas in oxygen atom, two of the four 2p electrons must occupy the same 2p orbital, resulting in an increasing electron-electron repulsion. Consequently, it is easier to remove the fourth 2p electron from oxygen than it is to remove one of the three 2p electrons from nitrogen. Fourth one, electron gain enthalpy. When an electron is added to neutral gaseous atom, say X, to convert it into negative ion, the enthalpy change accompanying the process is defined as the electron gain enthalpy, represented as delta H Eg. Electron gain enthalpy provides a measure of the EZ with which an atom adds an electron to form an ion as represented by equation 3.3. X in gaseous state attracts one electron and converts into X minus in gaseous state. Depending on the element, the process of adding an electron to the atom can be either endothermic or exothermic. For many elements, energy is released when an electron is added to the atom and the electron gain enthalpy is negative. For example, group 17 elements, that is halogens, have very negative electron gain enthalpies because they can attain stable noble gas configuration by picking up an electron. On the other hand, noble gases have large positive electron gain enthalpies because the electron has to enter the next higher principal quantum level leading to a very unstable electronic configuration. It may be noted that Electron gain enthalpies have large negative values towards the upper right of the periodic table preceding the noble gases. The variation in electron gain enthalpies of elements is less systematic than other ionization enthalpies. As a general rule, electron gain enthalpy becomes more negative with increasing in atomic number across a period. The effective nuclear charge increases from left to right across a period and consequently it will be easier to add an electron to a smaller atom since the added electron on an average would be closer to positively charged nucleus. We should also expect electron gain enthalpy to become less negative as we go down a group because the size of an atom increases and the added electron would be farther from the nucleus. This is generally the case. However, electron gain enthalpy of oxygen and fluorine is less negative than that of succeeding elements. This is because when an electron is added to oxygen or fluorine, the added electron goes to the smaller n equal to 2 quantum level and suffers significant repulsion from the other electrons present in this level. For n equal to 3 quantum level, that is for sulfur and chlorine, the added electron occupies a larger region of space and the electron-electron repulsion is much less. Fifth point, electronegativity. A quantitative measure of ability of an atom in a chemical compound to attract shared electrons to itself is called electronegativity. Unlike ionization enthalpy and electron gain enthalpy, it is not a measurable quantity. However, a number of numerical scales of electronegativity of elements is Pauling scale, Mullikan Jaffe scale, Aldred Rocho scale have been developed. The one which is the most widely used is the Pauling scale. Linus Pauling is the American scientist in 1922 assigned arbitrarily a value of 4 to fluorine the element considered to have the greatest ability to attract electrons. Approximate values for the electronegativity of a few elements 
are given in table 3.8. The electronegativity of any given element is not constant. It varies depending on the element to which it is bound. Though it is not a measurable quantity, it does provide a means of predicting the nature of force that holds a pair of atoms together, a relationship that you will explore later. Electronegativity generally increases across a period from left to right and decreases down a group in the periodic table. How can these trends be explained? Can the electronegativity be related to atomic radii which tend to decrease across each period from left to right but increase down the, each group? The attraction between the outer that is valence electrons and the nucleus increases as the atomic radius decreases in a period. The electronegativity also increases on the same account of electronegativity values decreases with the increasing in atomic radii down the group. The trend in similar to that of ionization enthalpy. Knowing the relationship between electronegativity and the atomic radius, can you now visualize the relationship between electronegativity and non-metallic properties? Non-metallic elements have strong tendency to gain electrons. Therefore, electronegativity is directly related to that non-metallic properties of elements. It can be further extended to say that the electronegativity is inversely related to the metallic properties of elements. Thus, the increasing in electronegativities across a period is accompanied by an increasing in a non-metallic properties of elements. Similarly, the decrease in electronegativity down a group is accompanied by the decreasing in non-metallic properties of elements. All these periodic trends are summarized in figure 3.7. 3.7.2 Periodic Trends in Chemical Properties Most of the trends in chemical properties of each element such as diagonal relationships, inert pair effect, effects of lanthanide contraction etc. will be dealt with along the discussions of each group in later units. In this section, we shall study the periodicity of the valence state shown by the elements and anomalous properties of the second period elements. First one, periodicity of valence or oxidation states. The valence is the most characteristic property of the elements and can be understood in terms of their electronic configurations. The valence of representative elements is usually equal to the number of electrons in the outermost orbitals and equal to 8 minus number of outermost electrons as shown below. Nowadays, the term oxidation state is frequently used for valence. Consider the two oxygen containing compounds OF2 and Na2O. The order of electronegativity of the three elements involved in these compounds is fluorine which is greater electronegativity compared to oxygen which is further having greater electronegativity compared to sodium. Each of the atoms of fluorine with outer electronic configuration 2s2 2p5 shares one electron with oxygen in the OF2 molecule. Being highest electronegative element Fluorine is given oxidation state minus 1. Since there are two fluorine atoms in this molecule, oxygen with outer electronic configuration 2s2 2p4 shares two electrons with fluorine atoms and thereby exhibits oxidation state plus 2. In Na2O, oxygen being more electronegative accepts two electron one from each of the two sodium atoms and this shows oxidation state of minus 2. On the other hand, sodium with electronic configuration 3s1 loses one electron to oxygen and is given oxidation state plus 1. Thus, the oxidation state of an element in a particular compound can be defined as the charge acquired by its atom on the basis of electronegative consideration from other atoms in the molecule. Some periodic trends observed in the valence of elements that is hydrates and oxides are shown in table 3.9. 
other such periodic trends which occur in the chemical behavior of the elements are discussed elsewhere in this book there are many elements which exhibit variable valence this is particular characteristic of transition elements and actinoids which we shall study later second one anomalous properties of second period elements the first element of the groups 1 and 2 and groups from 13 to 17 differs in many respects from the other members of their respective group for example lithium unlike other alkali metals and beryllium unlike other alkaline earth metals form compounds with pronounced covalent character the other members of these groups predominantly form ionic compounds in fact the behavior of lithium and beryllium is more similar with the second element of the following group that is magnesium and aluminium respectively this sort of similarity is commonly referred to as diagonal relationship in the periodic properties what are the reasons for the different chemical behavior of the first member of a group of elements in the s and p block compared to that of subsequent members in the same group the anomalous behavior is attributed to their small size large charge to radius ratio and high electronegativity of the elements in addition the first member of the group has only four valence orbitals available for bonding whereas the second member of the groups have nine valence orbitals as a consequence of this the maximum covalency of first member of each group is four whereas the other members of the groups can expand their valence shell or accommodate more than four pairs of electrons example aluminium that can form alf6 3 minus complex furthermore the first member of p block elements displays greater ability to form p pi p pi multiple bond to itself and the other second period elements compared to subsequent members of the same group 3.7.3 periodic trends and chemical reactivity we have observed the periodic trends in certain fundamental properties such as atomic and ionic radii ionization enthalpy electron gain enthalpy and valence we know by now that the periodicity is related to electronic configuration that is all chemical and physical properties are manifestation of the electronic configuration of elements we shall now try to explore relationships between these fundamental properties of elements with their chemical reactivity the atomic and ionic radii as we know generally decrease in period from left to right as a consequence the ionization enthalpies generally increase and electron gain enthalpies become more negative across a period in other words the ionization enthalpy of the extreme left element in a period is the least and the electron gain enthalpy of the element on the extreme right is the highest negative this results into high chemical reactivity at the two extreme and lowest in the center thus the maximum chemical reactivity at the extreme left is established by the loss of an electron leading to the formation of an cation and at the extreme right shown by the gain of an electron forming an anion this property can be related with the reducing and oxidizing behavior of the elements which you will learn later however here it can be directly related to the metallic and non metallic character of the elements thus the metallic character of an element which is highest at the extreme left decreases and the non metallic character increases while moving from left to right across the period the chemical reactivity of an element can be best shown by its reactions with oxygen and halogens here we shall consider the reactions of elements with oxygen only elements on two extremes of period easily combine with oxygen to form oxides the normal oxide formed by the element on extreme left is the most basic that is na2o is the example 
whereas that formed by the elements on extreme right is the most acidic for example cl2o7 oxides of elements in the center are amphoteric for example al2o3 or as2o3 or neutral example co no n2o etc amphoteric oxides behaves as acidic with bases and as basic with acids whereas neutral oxides have no acidic or basic properties among transition metals that is 3d series the change in atomic radii is much smaller as compared to those of representative elements across the period the change in atomic radii is still smaller among inner transition metals that is 4f series the ionization enthalpies are intermediate between those of s and p blocks as a consequence they are less electropositive than group 1 and group 2 metals in a group the increasing in atomic or ionic radii with increasing in atomic number gradually results in a gradual decreasing in ionization enthalpies and a regular decreasing in electron gain enthalpies in the case of main group elements thus the metallic character increases down the group and non metallic character decreases this trend can be related with their reducing and oxidizing property which you will learn later in the case of transition elements however a reverse trend is observed this can be explained in terms of atomic size and ionization enthalpy summary in this unit you have studied the development of periodic law and the periodic table mendeliev's periodic table was based on atomic masses periodic table arranges the elements in the order of their atomic numbers in seven horizontal rows that is known as periods and 18 vertical columns known as groups or families atomic numbers in a period are consecutive whereas in a group they are increasing in pattern elements of the same group have similar valence shell electronic configuration and therefore exhibit similar chemical properties however the elements of the same period have incrementally increasing number of electrons from left to right and therefore have different valencies four types of elements can be recognized in the periodic table on the basis of their electronic configurations these are s block p block d block and f block elements hydrogen with one electron in one s orbital occupies a unique position in the periodic table metals comprise more than 78% of the known elements non metals which are located at the top of the periodic table are less than 20 in number elements which lie at the border line between metals and non metals are called metalloids or semi metals metallic character increases with increasing in atomic number in a group whereas decreases from left to right in a period the physical and chemical properties of elements vary periodically with their atomic numbers periodic trends are observed in atomic sizes ionization enthalpies electron gain enthalpies electronegativity and valence the atomic radii decreases while going from left to right in a period and increases with atomic number in a group ionization enthalpies generally increases across a period and decreases down a group electronegativity also shows a similar trend electron gain enthalpies in general become more negative across a period and less negative down a group there is some periodicity in valence for example among representative elements the valence is either equal to number of electrons in the outermost orbitals or 8 minus this number chemical reactivity is highest at the two extremes of a period and is lowest in the center the reactivity on the left extreme of the period is because of the case of electron loss highly reactive elements 
do not occur in nature in free state. They usually occur in combined form. Oxide formed of the elements on the left are basic and of the elements on the right are acidic in nature. Oxides of elements in the center are amphoteric or neutral. So we have just completed our reading. Stay connected. Keep learning. Thank you for watching.